Greetings everyone, this is Danny from hardtravel.com and I'm currently on board the beautiful Harmony of the Seas. This is a ship that I know well and love deeply. I was on the very first pre-inaugural, so one of the first passengers ever to be on board and I've sailed on the ship a couple times and uh, absolutely loved every single one of them. So I'm gonna start off right at the back of the ship and right at the back of the ship there was a brand new innovation that Royal came up with and that was the Ultimate Abyss. So this was the first one that they ever built. When it was built, it was the largest slide at sea. Nothing else had ever really existed that was anything like that, uh, but now they have added it to the Symphony, the, the uh, Oasis, and it's going on the Allure very, very quickly. So let me walk over here and just point out what it's all about. So you can see that there's two stairways where you're gonna walk up. Uh, I've got the, the beautiful giant fish here. I love that, but you've got the sleds there. So you actually get into the sled, put your feet in it, hold on, and you go all the way down from the top deck down to the boardwalk. So it's a really fast ride, really fun ride, but make sure that you are uh, ready for a, a little bit of the extreme. It is a dry slide. I love that. You don't have to worry about uh, getting your bathing suit on or anything else, and you can have a great time with it. So right at the back of the ship, you're gonna have the wipeout bar. This is always a fun place to be. Uh, it's usually where you'll find dads waiting for their kids, and uh, we know how to have fun while we're waiting for our kids and watching them do really, really cool things like the Flow Rider. So the Flow Rider debuted on the Freedom of the Seas. Royal Caribbean's put it on every single ship since then, and they've retrofitted ships to add it. But it's the greatest thing to be standing on the very top of, of a ship, 16 stories up, and surfing or boogie boarding, whatever it is that you like. They also have this bar that goes out in the middle that separates it in two so that you can, uh, you, two people can use it at a time. And there's also a matching one on the other side and a shower right there. Make sure that you, you get uh, hosed off before you get in there. So right here is gonna be the zip line. These guys are, are awesome. They're taking care of you, but you do need to fill out the uh, one of the waivers before you do it. It's right around the corner on the other side. You can see somebody's just getting ready to zip right there. Ready, set, and go. So, uh, but basically you're going right over the middle of the boardwalk. It's a lot of fun, but with all of the sports activities up here on the deck, you are gonna need to sign a waiver. And if you're traveling with your kiddos, make sure that you come with them to sign that on their behalf. So now you get another view of the zip line and how it cuts directly across the boardwalk here. So right here below me is the boardwalk. I can see Johnny uh, Rockets right there, the aqua theater behind me. This was a brand new innovation that was created by Royal on the Oasis of the Seas. It's a great alternative uh, and a less, lower cost alternative to an ocean facing uh, uh, balcony. But just know that you're looking directly across the people. Everybody can see you, you can see them. So you gotta be a pretty social person to take those rooms. I have a lot of clients that love the ones in the very back there so that they can see the, uh, the Aqua Theater show. But once again, just a really, really cool innovation for a cruise ship. One of my favorite old school things to do on a cruise ship, it's free, it's easy, it's fun. You can do it with kids of all ages. And that is of course, miniature golf. So they've got the Harmony Dunes here. Let's see what we've got going today. You've got the balls in there. They've got these nice scorecards in here for you so you can keep track and uh, play. But I figure I'll go ahead and start right here. That's what you got. Hmm. All right, gotta find the hole first. Here we go. Yeah, a little too much power on there. Give me a bounce back. All right. Got a chance. Got a chance. Oh, all right. Tap in par. There we go. Not too bad. I, I have some awesome memories from all of my cruises, especially with Royal Caribbean. We started cruising with them a ton when the Voyager class ships came out, but we would always come up here. If we wanted something fun to do, we would always find the miniature golf course and play all kinds of different games with it. So a fun thing to do with you and your family on board the ship. So now I am on the sport court, another place where I've had amazing memories going all the way back to my early childhood. My dad is a basketball coach. My brother and I both played high school and college basketball. And so we would always love playing in the three on three tournaments, dodgeball, everything that you can imagine. So let's see if I've still got it. I'm not sure if I do, but uh, there we go. Oh, nothing. Okay. As my dad would always say, the bank is open. All right, so just in front of the Flow Rider, you have one of several places on board where you can grab food, kind of grab and go area. Fast casual, I really appreciate it. You got your hamburgers, hot dogs, fries. Um, and then of course, over there, my absolute favorite place on the entire ship, well, in any of the restaurants, and that is of course the desserts right here. Beautiful, beautiful, happy, happy. You know what I'm talking about, but I'll show you what I'm really happy about in just a second. So before we head up to the top of the pool deck, I'm gonna take you to, not, you know, I know we're in Orlando right now, and the happiest place on earth is right there but I'm gonna take you to my absolute happiest place on earth, and that is the soft serve machine. I get a, a, a mixed? Uh, strawberry vanilla. Yeah, strawberry vanilla sounds perfect. All right, thank you so much. Not the uh, the hearty pour that I would have given myself, but you know. Mm. Pretty good, mm. love it. So now we are up on the top deck. I've got the first of four pool areas down below me. 
So this ship is divided into seven different distinct neighborhoods, and this is the one that's kind of like the, the beach neighborhood, if you want to think about it. So this pool is used for sports and different things along those lines. You can see you have a ton of loungers here. You can sit on the side, put your feet in the water, and then another really large hot tub. I do love those chairs over at the edge. A lot of times I'll turn them around and then look down on Central Park as well. Another cool feature you can see is right up behind me is the, uh, well, it's the Viking Crown loft area. Um, that's where you're gonna find the coastal kitchen and the suite lounge, and you can already see some of the, uh, the uh, Crown lofts over there on the side. So we're gonna continue on back. Here is the mass bar. How's it going? You guys are having a good time just getting started. It's on uh, our sail away day, of course, here. Um, but there's the, uh, the mass bar there, another identical bar around to the other side. And one thing that I do notice, I just wanted to point out, is on the massively amplified new ships, um, the Oasis specifically that I was just on, what they did here is they built out this entire area with beautiful, colorful seating, and they put in the cabanas. So next year when this ship goes in for a dry dock in Europe, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of those, uh, those aesthetic differences maybe upgraded on this one as well. But this ship is beautiful. Look right there. What you see is the first massive water slide complex that Royal Caribbean really had on any of their ships. It was huge hit, people love it, and so they're gonna put it on all of them. But you got the, the trio of water slides uh, over there. That one's got the champagne bowl, and then the two racers over here as well. So another pool right here. This is kind of a, a good family pool area because you got the water slides, a ton of seating here as well. And then it's, it's tiered just a little bit. Uh, and then of course the hot tub as well. So another feature I noticed on some of the newer ships um, that they put an extra hot tub up here. So I'm looking forward to see what they do with that. So just above the pool deck, you have another exclusive area that's just for suite guests. So this is the suite deck. It's open to sky class and star class suite guests along with Pinnacle members. Really what it is, it's just an exclusive place where you're never gonna have to fight for a, a chair. So you see these nice, big, padded, comfy chairs in here, beautiful furniture, lots of places to sit around, relax and hang out. It is smoke-free. I know on some of the other ships they do have smoking zones up here, but I wanted to point that out uh, for those who it matters to. Um, and then of course, the sweet deck zone, the bar. <laughs> it's a, it's all, I always have a ton of fun there. Um, always meet the most interesting people that, uh, that are really just here to have a great time. So another really, really awesome amenity up here is the hot tub. So this doesn't exist on the Allure or the Oasis class, but on the Symphony and the Harmony, you are gonna have a hot tub. And then of course, a shower to, uh, to rinse off for that hot tub. But it's just a great perk once again. If you're looking for that hot tub, you never have to worry about you know, being crowded or anything because there's so many spaces on board for sweet guests to go that they really do spread out and use all of them at different times of the day. Okay, so now as we head forward, you can see the solarium. So the solarium is the adults only area on board. We'll get to that in a bit, but I just wanted to point that out below me, but here you have a ton more loungers and it's very quiet. So when you're in the back area, you're gonna hear a lot of noise from the pool, you know, the music, that's what it's all about, the steel drums getting after it. But this area is the place to sit back, relax, and really just, uh, you know, soak up the sun if that's what you're into and just find a quiet place to read. And one of the great places for that are these little cabanas. So these are not something that you can rent. They're kind of first come, first serve, um, but they're really, really nice, especially if you have, you know, a large family or two families that are traveling together to kind of come, come in here and utilize this and then look down once again, because, uh, well, the exclusivity of it makes it so that it's quiet, it's relaxing, and it's a really, really elevated experience. All right, so now we're continuing on. We are on the starboard side of the suite deck. There is not a bar over here, but this is where you're gonna have the restrooms. I love that they have them up here. That way you don't have to, uh, to worry about going down to utilize that. They also have these really nice day beds that are even tall enough for, uh, for somebody like me. And then more, uh, more loungers spread out throughout. And one thing that I do notice on this that they took away is there used to be another entrance right here on the Oasis and the Allure, um, but they kind of made it a little bit more exclusive with just the one entrance. And also uh, it added a little more space to put uh, deck chairs out there. So you also have the this little cubby kind of area tucked away here if you want to be out of the sun completely. And then another fantastic part of the suite deck is the chairs that are out here. So once again, if you uh, love people watching, right there is one of the Perfect Storm water slides. I call it the champagne bowl, toilet bowl, whatever you want to call it. But it's really funny because if you get enough momentum going, you spin all the way around and then you go down. If you don't, you kind of, uh, well, stop halfway and it's really fun to, to watch for everybody else. So just fun place from here. Right here I can see the beach pool down there as well. I can see right down into Central Park. And then they have these really nice loungers that are gonna face this way. And when the, the Caribbean music picks up, they just took a break right here, but when the Caribbean music picks up, you kind of get all of that. You get the people watching, you can see the ocean, and then of course you can uh, have the band right in front of you. Okay, so now we're gonna continue on forward towards the solarium. Before we got there, I just wanted to point out these cantilevered hot tubs. They started putting these on the ships with the freedom of the seas. I love it. It's a really cool place. You can just sit back, relax, and then they put these TVs in. So on a Sunday, watching a little football, being in the hot tub, beer, 
not a bad way to, to enjoy your, uh, your Sunday as far as I'm concerned. So we're going to continue on in here. Now we've kind of crossed over into the solarium. So the solarium is the adults only area, but they classify that as 16 and up. So it's going to be a much quieter and more relaxed area than the pool deck. Um, and it's really for people who want to kind of escape it all and relax. So right up top here, the first thing that you're going to encounter is the solarium bar. So this space is used for a ton of different things, a wide array of different kind of seating. So if you want to sit back with friends, um, they also have the loungers up here and then a ton more down below. So we're going to head on down, but I just wanted to show you this part before we headed down to the main part of the solarium. All right, so now I'm on the main deck of the solarium. So there's two really large hot tubs here, a bunch more different kinds of seating. You've got chairs over on the side. You've got some more loungers and some, uh, actually these really nice soft chairs uh, with a chaise that comes out. You've got this really interesting uh, car wash uh, shower thing that you walk through. But I wanted to point out that above me, you have open air and kind of, you know, this, this mesh area and then also the glass. So when they designed this, of course, a lot of it has to do with efficiency and the ship moving forward. But the way the wind blows when you're uh, when you're in here, it gives you a nice breeze. I will say that personally, um, I'm a little bit partial to the Allure and the Oasis. Of course, the Oasis was my first love, um, but I'm partial to their uh, their solarium because it feels a little bit bigger and more open here uh, because there's more deck out front. So let me take you down and show you what I'm talking about. All right, so now I'm heading on to the third level of the, the solarium. Those of you who are counting, you got a nice large hot tub here as well. And then you, what, what's great about this particular deck is that you're looking straight out to the front of the ship. They do have some windows that open up that give you extra breeze there as well. But if you grab one of these seats, maybe uh, for a sun, sunrise or a sunset or one of these day beds, it's just a perfect place to relax and really, really enjoy what your cruise vacation is all about. Okay, so now we are out on the wing, and of course, you know what this spot is for. It's the uh, the Jack and Rose moment where you come with your spouse, and well, you know they do have photographers on board if you're interested to do that. But uh, you know, stand up here, let the wind in your place. But uh, it, it's it's a really cool space. And one thing I wanted to point out is on the Oasis and the Allure, they actually turned this spot into a stateroom. So you can check that out in one of our videos if you're interested. It's the ultimate panoramic suite. But uh, we go, and then one last thing I'll point out: these uh, fun binoculars they have all over the ship now where you can see, well, once again, almost Kennedy Space Center. So I know it's over there, that's okay. All right, so now we're gonna head into the Solarium Bistro. You notice that there is a hand washing station there, but when this ship was built, this was actually meant to be kind of an elevated um, concept. So initially they partnered with a celebrity chef and this was a specialty dining restaurant in the evenings, but for you know whatever reason, it didn't end up being the, uh, the right situation for them. And so it's converted over to kind of the Solarium Bistro like they're gonna have on the Allure, the Oasis, and of course the Symphony. Um, but one of the touches that they put in was like these curtains. So when you have the elevated dining experience in the evening, it kind of uh, shuts off the buffet completely and it feels like a completely different experience. So right here, this is a great place to go, um, on, especially on boarding day, but anytime you wanna get food, you've got grab and go, um, you got pasta station, meats, um, and all that. And then over here, you're gonna have the salad bar and of course, the most important part of the entire cruise ship, my favorite place in the whole world, and that's the, uh, well, my friends, the dessert bar. So any which way. Um, we're gonna continue on over here, but before we leave, I just wanted to take you to the spot where they actually have the chef's table on board this ship. Okay, so right here is where you're gonna have the chef's table experience. They do it once per night on the cruise. You gotta sign up in advance because it does fill up every time, but really it's an over the top, excellently paired uh, meal that's paired with wines and the chef will come out and talk through each course for you. Uh, but it's a really great social experience. You can, can rent it out for an entire uh, part, private party, or of course, just one or two of you can book and join a uh, larger group of people. All right, so now we are on the starboard side of the ship. Right below me is the beach pool. So this is the only pool on board that is salt water. Um, but what's really interesting is it kind of laps up. So the bottom row of chairs, you can actually put your feet in the water, which I really appreciate. But you can also walk completely around and you've got the, uh, the chairs that face down there that you can turn around and look down at Central Park as well. There is two hot tubs on this part as well. And then this is, uh, it, it's kid friendly. All of these areas are kid friendly. So keep in mind, if you want that adults only atmosphere, you've got to stay in the solarium. So as we continue further on back here, um, what you see is a little bit of artwork. And one thing that I've noticed with the, the Royal ships that have been amplified, or well, the brand new ones is they've gone all in with the color. So when this ship does go in to, to get its touch-ups, it'll be interesting to see how they change the artwork or how they reconfigure different things on the ship. So we're heading past the, uh, the beach pool still. It's a pretty large one. You see the bandstand over there. To me, as soon as I hear that steel drum, all of a sudden, my blood pressure goes down, my smile goes up, I know that I'm in the Caribbean, I start walking with a little happier step, and uh, to me that's what cruising's all about, that's what cruising with Royal Caribbean is all about, it's kind of that fun, familial atmosphere, 
good music, places where you can go to escape it all if you want to go up to the Sweet Lounge or the Solarium, but it's kind of something for absolutely everybody in the entire crew uh, and the extended family as well. So it's talking about the family, right here is Splash, Splash Away Bay. So this is my daughter's favorite part on board. You can see exactly why. Um, they've got a couple slides there for the, the younger kiddos. Of course, we've got the huge slides for the big kiddos, but slides for the younger kiddos, places where they can run around. They've got the big splash bucket. Um, and then of course, a huge hot tub, which is where you will find me sitting, relaxing and uh, keeping an eye on the kiddos. And then they also have the lifeguards down there as well. They also have life jackets. My high recommendation is if your kids are not phenomenal swimmers, please take every precaution uh, and safety is key. And then of course, Coco K uh, on board the ship. But, uh, but please, please, please always keep an eye on your kiddos when they are around the water. All right, so now I'm in the suite lounge. It is a beautiful space. You can see all of the purple furniture. Once again, I love that color. I see it all over the ship. It looks really beautiful. Um, and then over here, you're gonna have the uh, Buffet. So this is set up right now. Um, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They'll have some quick eats, and then of course I'll take you to the coastal kitchen in a minute. But you got your espresso drinks. This is open to all sky class and above, and then uh, C class can have a meal or two in here based on availability. But right now you see all the cheeses and the fruits getting ready to serve in just a few minutes, and then you have these beautiful chairs and seats all over ar around the the whole crown of the ship. So this is in the crown. That's a signature of Royal Caribbean. It's a beautiful use of the space and my sweet guests absolutely love it. I'm sure you can see why now. So I'm gonna continue on over to the other side of the space and it's kind of divided into two. So the suite lounge is, is over here. You've got your concierges here. They can handle any needs that you have on board, reservations. Uh, basically they can make things happen that you need to make happen. Um, and right when we cross over now, we're actually at the bar and then this is the coastal kitchen. So. Once again, if you're in Sky Class, you can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner in here. It's seated, it's incredible quality, and it's one of the best parts of having a suite on Royal Caribbean International. One thing I will say is that the bartender, I think here, has a pretty amazing view, looking out at the, uh, the middle of the ship there. Right here is uh, one of my favorite tables. I actually had an amazing meal with Vicki Fried right here, um, and uh, well, had some sushi that was unbelievable, and then the coastal kitchen as well. But we love our partnership with Royal Caribbean. We value it deeply. Uh, we have a ton of sweet guests, and I love sending them to Royal Caribbean because I know that they're gonna have an amazing time, and I know that they're gonna be taken care of in a way that not everybody else can do. All right, so now we're headed into the Windjammer Buffet, which is deck 16 aft. You got your hand washing station, of course, as you would expect. And then over here, uh, you're gonna have the drink station. So these are all over the ship. They're in all different venues, um, but you've got your Vitality water. I like the strawberry kiwi water. I like that it's an alternative um, to just lemonade, but of course they do have your lemonade and iced tea, and then all your full assortment of teas and uh, coffees and everything else that, uh, that you would want throughout the cruise. And once again, everything here is complimentary. So across the way, there is a bar. Um, they do have a full bar in here, and then they also have fresh squeezed orange juice, uh, but keep in mind that that would be an additional cost, but one of my favorite things on board a ship. All right, so as we head on back, you can see what the stations are all about. So this is gonna be the cold dishes. You've got salads and uh, everything to make your own salad. I love the Waldorf salad. They always have that on boarding day. Um, you're also gonna have grab and go sandwiches. You can see that they put in a bunch of different smaller stations in here with a lot of things that were pre-prepared because it speeds up the process and helps with the flow completely. Back there, you're gonna have like the bakery and then Americana. So you've got uh, uh, burgers and, and fries and everything along those lines. Mediterranean, hummus, really, really good fresh pita bread that they make on board. And then back here, you're gonna see some of the hot dishes. So a little bit of the same, but you've got your chicken and your fish. Um, they always have paella on boarding day as well. Um, and then a giant, giant uh, prime rib over there that you can't beat. So right here, you're gonna find the man who will get you all the drinks that you need that are not included. So if you purchase the, old, the beverage package, it's something that's included. But of course, other than that, you're gonna pay a la carte. You can also see another uh, identical station to what we saw just um, a minute ago. So. One of the things that uh, Royal does really, really well is goes all in on things. So you see this beautiful giant welcome aboard cake, and then they also make pastries like that throughout. Really, really beautiful. And now we've come to, uh, well, you know, the happiest part of the tour, which of course is the desserts. Well, this is just a little bit of the desserts. I'll show you the rest of them later, but uh, that, that's what makes me uh, incredibly happy here. And then uh, one thing I just point out, they do a great job with allergens. This is a question that I get all the time. Right here are specifically uh, gluten-free options. They're gonna have them in the buffet, also on the menu, but uh, make sure that you always tell your waiter or you ask about that. But once again, I think it's really awesome they have it identified and very easy to grab, and you don't have to go back and uh, you know search special for it. So as we continue further on back, 
Um, you see more desserts, once again, my happy place. And then over here, they have kind of a, a mix and match. Sometimes they'll do a pasta station. Sometimes they'll do uh, different kind of Asian cuisines and things like that back here as well. And then uh, right over here, you've got the uh, Indian food. So Indian food is on point. It's really, really excellent. And if you love it, uh, well, you'll probably find me here a couple times throughout the cruise at the very least. For me personally, when I board a ship, you know, the buffet is the first place a lot of people go. Today, the buffet was really, really crowded, but I always want to point out that the best place to go is the very back. So I see quite a few open uh, chairs here and tables, um, but there's also several other options. So keep in mind, you've got grab and go food uh, throughout. So you've got the park cafe, you've got grab and go by the pool, um, but uh, this may not be the place you want to go right away, right when you board, but uh, throughout the entire cruise, this is always where you want to go, the very back. Here's the last, uh, uh, station to go and once right once again right here they're making a uh, pasta custom order uh, as, as you like hey look rolls they must be rolling rolling on a river oh hey they pinned it up against the wall too that's pretty cool I like it Okay, so now we are in the living room, which is a huge space on board that's dedicated to the 12 to 17 year olds. So they've got video game stations, you've got FIFA, Minecraft, all that kind of stuff over here. And uh, as you continue on in, what you'll see is more of the shared spaces. So lots of little nooks, places to hang out, which is perfect for teenagers. I'm gonna take you around the corner here before we head on outside. Um, this is the, the lounge area. On some of the other ships, I have seen a library where they can uh, check books in and out as well, but they have these little cubbies and nooks. I was a middle school teacher for 10 years. I know for sure that kids like to uh, tuck away in nooks and have little conversations and then just have a great time on board and enjoy the full social aspect of going on a cruise. I know when I was a teenager, my brother and I absolutely loved it, um, loved the freedom that it provided and also the, uh, you know, kind of just the, the independence and overall fun. So my parents could have fun doing what they're doing and we could have fun doing what we're doing. So now you have a massive, massive TV there set up for Mario Kart. I would personally like to do it. I'm hoping they'll close it down at night for me. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Um, but this is kind of a, a tiered area right here where you can uh, watch videos or sorry, watch movies. And then of course, uh, participate in the video games if you'd like. Another unique feature about this space is they do have their own private outdoor space. Okay, so this is a hangout lounge, an extension of the living room with a lot of funky outdoor furniture here. It's all plastic, so it's all weather. And then right behind that wall there is a ping pong table. They've got one on either side. I love that they've closed it in completely because that way, uh, you know, the wind doesn't blow the balls away. I know that's the only way that my wife would uh, beat me consistently was when, the, you know, the wind picked up the balls, for sure. That was it. Yeah. You know. Chick it, chick it. No? Oh. My bad. Sorry, sorry. Okay, let's get back. So uh, this is the teen club. One thing I love about it is that they really set it up like a, a regular club and the regular club on board where everybody can have what they want. So you've got this uh, DJ booth here, so it feels like an adult nightclub. You've got a full bar back there where they're going to mix mocktails. But I was a middle school teacher for a decade before I started doing this full time. And I know that these seats are for the kids on the dance who like to sit on the outside. And I used to hang out with them all the time when I was chaperoning. This is the one for the, the dancers that are going to get after it. I can see a, a few kids have, have uh, done some break dancing in here. Um, but really, at the end of the day, what this is all about is giving the kids a unique vacation experience that's as close to the adult experience as they want, but also it's a safe atmosphere uh, where, uh, you know, they have the, the counselors and they can, they can keep track of them and make sure that uh, they just have an amazing time. Okay, so just on the other side of the teen club is the large arcade. So one thing I wanted to point out is these arcade games are not complimentary, it's not included. Um, so you wanna to talk to your kiddos about a budget or uh, possibly doing something unlimited, but you can decide on that. But as you walk through, you can see it's a wide range. They've got kind of the grab games here, like the claw and things like that. The classic driving games. I've started to see these VR games pop up, which I really like. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if in the very new feature, one of their uh, American um, ships, the one that's, that's dedicated to the American market, does have a full VR center. That's really, really popular, but that's what this game is. And you got a couple more of them here. And then of course the classic, you know, ski ball was over there, but you got the air hockey and uh, just, uh, well, there's another motorcycle game as well. But once again, it's an arcade. It's for everybody on board. A lot of times I see the dads in here as much as the teenagers. So uh, have a great time. Just outside the arcade, you have Breeze, which is basically just a sundry shop if you forgot something at home, toiletries. Uh, they also have some clothing, bathing suits, and things like that. But this is that place to grab those things that you just forgot to bring on board. All right, so now we're heading into the Adventure Ocean Center. The Adventure Ocean Center is Royal Caribbean's Kids Club, and I have loved it personally since I was a little kiddo myself and did my first cruise when I was, I think, about eight years old. So before we do, I wanted to point out uh, right here they have Escape the Rubicon. This is their escape room, um, and uh, it, it is an additional fee. I believe it's $19.95 per person, but it's a lot of fun. You can do it if with a private group, or you can just be one person in another group uh, that decides to do that. All right, so the, for the first space that I'm going to show you is the Royal Babies and Tots. So I'm going to take you in here real quick. 
This is for the littlest cruiser. So the youngest cruisers that they allow on board would be six months old, and that's for the standard cruisers. It's one year if you're doing the transatlantic or one of the longer ones. Uh, but what's really cool about this program is you can take the littlest kiddos and you can actually drop them off. So back here is the, the nursery area. There's no kiddos here yet. Um, but back here, you've got all of the cribs. They are amazing at it. They'll put them all down to sleep. They'll feed them. They'll change diapers. But keep in mind that it is an additional fee. It's a little bit more in the evening. Um, but I think it's well, well, well worth it. And you can see they have all the toys here for them. They have the counselors in here playing with them. And they really, really enjoy the experience. One more thing that I wanted to point out is the bathrooms. I love it. Uh, when my daughter was potty training, having a, a toilet like that was such a useful thing because she loves having things her, her size. So they did a really, really good job on it. And it's beautifully decorated, of course. So just across is the play area that kind of corresponds with the Royal Babies and Tots. This is for the smaller kiddos, but this space is where parents, uh, siblings, things like that can come and play. I know for my daughter, it was really nice to have all this space for her to run around, play with other kiddos, and you know sometimes you don't want to drop them off completely or you have something else going on, but this is just a really nice play area so they can run, get their energy out, and have uh, fun with things that are their size and age appropriate. Okay, so the next space that we're gonna head into is a multi-use space, it's the Imagination Studio. So kind of right brain, left brain. On the other side, I'll show you the Science Center, but this is the place for kids to be creative, and it's also a place where families can come. So they'll have uh, things for every member of the family. You see all the different papers and paints, crayons, things like that. Um, but I love that they have a ton of space here. I know my daughter's all-time favorite is to color. Um, she loves doing it, and so here they get to do um, you know, basically as they want. They also have some uh, books. They'll do some story time and things like that as well, and then there's a bunch of toys that they can play with in here. Okay, so now I'm headed into Aquanauts. This is the three to five-year-old's play space. It's set up like that. You can completely see that. So right here, they've got a little area where they can help up and take the slides down. Um, they've got all the art supplies put away, um, and they also have different uh, sport, sporting uh, events and things like that in here. They'll do like the bowling with the kiddos. Um, but really, this is just a place for three to five-year-olds to run around, have a good time. It's all programmed, so they're going to have activities for them to do basically you know, every 20, 30 minutes throughout the entire day. Um, and then also, they have some late-night uh, babysitting activities as well, but it's for an additional cost. Okay, so now we're in the Explorers area. This is the six to eight year olds. You can see they've got the, uh, the soccer goals set up there and then they play dodgeball and all kinds of fun games. And same thing, they're gonna have age appropriate games throughout the entire trip. They'll have art, uh, different you know, learning activities, but really this is just the, the space for them to come, relax, hang out with kids that are their own age and have a really, really good time. All right, so the nine to 11 year olds are called the Voyagers. Once again, same concepts as the other one. They're gonna have age appropriate games. You see some more video games in here um, as you get a little bit older in age, but they also have a dance floor, ton of fun. They do dances with the kiddos. They absolutely love it. And then they've got a TV over there, so they'll do movie time in here as well. Once again, programmed throughout the entire day and their specific art, you know, science, um, different kinds of learning, but basically it gives the kids the choice of a couple different things to do and uh, to really just enjoy the cruise, but also get an educational experience at the same time. So now we are in the science lab. So we showed you the art studio over there. But once again, this is the place for kids to experiment with uh, different scientific, well, there you go. There's a lava, a volcano. I'm sure we know the trick to that. A little vinegar, a little baking soda, that kind of stuff. But they do all kinds of different experiments here that demonstrate science. Um, I really like that they focus some of it on the marine you know, science because of course you're on the ocean here. But once again, every kid likes things differently. Some may be all about sports, some may be science, music, uh, art, but they have all of those bases covered here in the Adventure Ocean Center. So now we're in the Adventure Ocean Theater. Once again, space just dedicated to the kiddos. Um, up here you have a very unique feature um, that I think Royal Caribbean is the only one that's doing. I got to see it recently on the Oasis of the Seas, but it is a puppet show. So it has, uh, it's kind of glow in the dark. Um, once again, kind of, kind of cool to do. And then also you're gonna have movies here as well. But uh, once again, I love that they've made it the perfect size for kids, quite a bit of seating, nice uh, soft bench seats. But once again, something for every single kid and it just depends on what they're interested in. Okay, so now you've seen all of the spaces in the Adventure Ocean Center. They're pretty cool, they're great, they're just like any play space in the world, but what makes it truly special are all of these people. So these are all the counselors, they all have a degree, um, they all are specialists in, in uh, child development, and they choose to be here, and the kids absolutely love them, and they love the kids as well. So that's what the Adventure Ocean Center is all about, having a perfect time for the kids so that everybody else in the family can have a perfect time for them as well. So right here is the Seven Hearts card room. It's actually a pretty large card room for a contemporary cruise ship. They have all Macs on the side that you can use. Uh, if you have the Voom Internet, of course, you can, you can utilize it there as well. But this is just a social place to play games. They've got a bunch that you can check out, a few books, but just, uh, you know, really it's all about playing the card games uh, like Bridge and things along those lines. So I'd like to invite you today to take a trip down the rabbit hole. Here you go, come on, follow me on on. Oh, Wonderland. I absolutely adore everything about it. 
Get it? Adore? Get it? Anyway, all right, fair enough. So what this is all about, it's about opening up your imagination and uh, you know, kind of entering that, that world of Alice in Wonderland where things are upside down and inside out, and maybe they're a little bit different than they look. So right here, there you go, you got a couch folded in half, now I guess it's a single chair. Okay, so the top area that you come in, this is the full bar. It's kind of like the waiting area for the restaurant. You got a full bar here, you got a couple more bar tops over here, and then you have a, a real waiting room kind of over in the side there. But what really makes this space unique is as I look out the back, you have this giant two-story window that looks out at the ultimate abyss. You see the ocean in the background, and of course, the boardwalk down there. Okay, so now we are one floor below, and we are in the main part of the dining space. So I love that it's kind of a funky setup where you have all the different kinds of couches and chairs, and uh, they also have the, the big goblets here, and I'll point out the brush. So every time when you sit down for, for dinner, what they're gonna do is they're gonna give you the brush, they're gonna give you a little inkwell and your menu. As you paint the menu, it's gonna reveal itself on there. And once again, the whole concept behind all the food is to look like something and maybe you know taste like something else or have a unique, unique flavor to surprise you as you go. Also the wall decor here, very Alice in Wonderland. So you can see that, the, that once again, this is an illusion. You have the frame, looks like it's coming out of the wall and as, as the wall curves, it kind of disappears into it. But that's what this is all about. I also I also love the giant family table. If you are traveling with a large family, first off, gotta walk out, watch out for the, uh, the overhead decor throughout the ship if you're six foot six. Um, but you can reserve this for your family. It's perfect for a party of 10 and uh, it's right in front of the kitchen. So you're also gonna get all of the incredible smells and things that you get from that open kitchen as well. Okay, so now we are in the two level nightclub on board called Dazzle. So the whole concept behind this is you have the upper level here where you got the balcony seating. You can look down, watch the dance floor, musicians, things like that. Um, but also it's usually a little bit quiet up here and a little bit further away from the action. Um, they have an eclectic mix of seating up here. Of course, you've got the chairs, you've got these nice booths, and then way in the back, you've got kind of this really long couch booth uh, type thing. And then on the other side, you're gonna see that you have the stairway down, uh, but we just wanted to give you a view of what it looks like because once again, just like Wonderland, you have an amazing two-story view here looking right out at the ultimate abyss and down the boardwalk. All right, so as we head down the stairs, you can see the bar is here, so keep that in mind if you're upstairs. Uh, might be a little bit quicker down here, but you've got a full bar setting. You've got seating over on both sides, and then this is the really, really large dance floor that kind of extends all the way out. I've also seen them do weddings in this space, corporate events. I've had quite a few events in here myself. A um, little more living room style seating over here, and then right here you're gonna have the stage. So uh, it's really, really about the view, and it's about the music kind of off to the side. It's all about having a place to basically have a nightclub, but in a more elegant experience than what Royal had had on previous ships. All right, so now I am in Central Park. Central Park is a unique space that only exists on the Oasis class ships. There's over 10,000 live plants in here, and there's people on board that all they do is care for the plants. It's a unique feature on board, and what I love about it is, well, it is outdoors, it's open space, so if you're gonna eat out here with your loved one, you're gonna wanna use your umbrella, of course. There you go. Thanks, Ellie. There you go. So, um, but as you walk through, what's cool about it is it doesn't really feel like you're actually on a cruise ship because you're surrounded by plants and different architectural features. It's, uh, and also these, uh, these great restaurants. So the first one I'm gonna walk through is 150 Central Park. So follow me on in. 150 Central Park is a farm to table style restaurant. It's one of the higher end restaurants on board Royal. It is a specialty restaurant, so there is an extra fee. In fact, I dined right here the last time I was in here, um, but it was designed originally with uh, Michael Schwartz. And so it, it kind of tells you the, the cuisine that it's all about, but it's really just a really beautiful place, a fantastic wine menu. Each and every one of them has a really, really beautiful mosaic by a local artist. And uh, once again, this is just kind of the farm to table restaurant if you want that elevated experience on board. So just outside of uh, Central Park 150, once again, keep in mind, got to be super careful. Looks like it might rain today. Don't you think, Ali? There we go. Okay, so that's the rising tide. I just want to talk about it as we walk around. It's a very, very unique bar that doesn't exist. Once again, I know I've been saying that over and over again, but it doesn't exist on any other class of ship in the world. So this is down on the promenade currently, three decks below, and it's going to go up and down throughout the day. But one thing that I learned the, uh, you know, the semi hard way is if you have a reservation or an appointment or something like that, you're going to want to make sure that you don't get on the bar a couple minutes before because it does take a little while to get up and down. And now we've walked around it. You can see the other entry part over here. So now we are going to head into Chops. Right, so what Chops is all about is it is a classic steakhouse. They've got these nice vinyl chairs in here. They've had it in the fleet for at least 20 years. 
they put it on every single ship and it always fills up. So it's, it, like I said, it's a classic steakhouse. You've got the jumbo shrimp. You've got all kinds of different steaks. My absolute favorite is a ribeye and they do an amazing job with that here. They also have an open kitchen concept. It's, it's closed right now because they're doing the cleaning, um, but they have an open kitchen concept. So you get that really, really wonderful smells of steak coming in and also uh, a great combination of indoor and outdoor seating. So when we step outdoors, you notice I do not have my umbrella yet. And the reason I don't have my umbrella yet is this ceiling is covered here. So you've got a glass roof right there. So if you want the outdoor area, you can. And they open all of this up here so you get the breeze as well. And you're surrounded by plants. So once again, a really cool feature on board a cruise ship. All right, so we're gonna continue on forward in Central Park. The next thing that we're gonna run into is the trellis bar. So once again, a perfect place for people watching. It's right in the middle of Central Park. You got a lot of people walking through here. There we go, sir. Thank you so much. Um, these are uh, some of the tables that we love to, to hang out, and then we always tell people, find us in the middle of Central Park. They can always find you here. It's a really easy reference point. And then a full bar, of course. Just across from the trellis bar is the trellis that gets its name from. And this is super cool because when you're walking through it, it feels like you're completely surrounded by plants. You've got vines above you on all the side. It's a really romantic place. May have seen or uh, participated and helped out with a proposal or two in this area itself. You've got some nice little tables and, uh, and chairs. So just on the other side of the trellis is Jamie's Italian. This is a partnership with Jamie Oliver. I loved it on the Quantum where it debuted. I've enjoyed this restaurant many, many, many times with my friends and family. This is probably my, the, my, my primary choice each and every time I get one. So follow me on in. Okay, so the cuisine is all about modern Tuscan, you know, Italian. They use incredibly fresh ingredients. In fact, as part of the partnership, they have specific ones that they, they source them from. Um, the board is one of my favorite things here. It's a nice, large charcuterie platter, but you can't really go wrong. I, I think I've had just about every single item on the menu, and I've enjoyed just about every single item in the menu. They also have a great wine selection uh, that they can uh, talk, if you talk to, uh, the sommelier, they'd be happy to pair with you for your dinner. That's in every single restaurant on board. Um, but here, when I think of uh, Italy, I always think of wine. And uh, maybe a really, really beautiful uh, Chianti would be perfect right now for me. All right, so just across from uh, Jamie's Italian is another one of the fast casual options. I love this on boarding day. I love it throughout the cruise when you don't want to sit down and have a longer meal. You just want something really, really quick. So that is going to be the Park Cafe right in the middle of Central Park. Ah, just kidding. All right. So um, we're going to head on in. I'll show you what it's all about. The first station over here is Soup of the Day. They always have two or three good choices. Also have some really good desserts there as well. I seem to know where all the desserts are here, sorry. Um, you have grab and grow sandwiches uh, and uh, fruit. Once again, it's all complimentary, it's all included. And then as you work your way down, it's kind of like a you know, different kind of deli, but you've got carvery here where they've got different meats. They've got several salad options that they will uh, create for you. Um, I really like doing the chopped salad. And also they can turn any of those sandwiches into a panini and they also will make those custom for you. On the other side, you have the full drink station, like you're gonna have at all the eateries. Uh, and then over here, you're gonna have the condiments. Like uh, chops, it's also gonna have indoor and outdoor seating, so follow me on out. You see Jamie's right across the way, but pretty large outdoor seating area. Once again, this is boarding day. This is the most crowded that you will find this space always is on boarding day. Okay, so now I'm back in Central Park Square. This is the dead center of the ship, um, and we're gonna head on over to Vintages. But before we do, I wanted to point out this beautiful, glass sculpture. One of the great parts of it is that it's open down to the promenade below, so you're going to get natural light in the dark center part of the ship. On the original Voyager class ships when the promenade was, was created, they had no way to do that. There were rooms directly above it, so it's a really, really cool feature that makes it feel like uh, daylight uh, when it is daylight, which is a, a nice thing to have on the inside of a ship. So I'm going to head on in to Vintages. Of course, when you go in, don't forget to drop off your umbrellas. Be rude not to and we'll head on in. So Vintages is the wine bar on board. It is it has a massive, massive wine collection as you would expect. So you see all the bottles they have over here. They have really beautiful furniture. It's really large. This is a place that I love to sneak and hide away at during the day, sometimes in the morning and read. There's a few of those spaces throughout the ship because they've got nice little couches tucked away that are really comfy. Here's the main bar area. How's it going? Hi there. Um, you also have the wine by the glass here where you can use your, your card. And then if you head all the way over here, you're going to have the area where they're going to do uh, the different wine tasting. So if you are a Crown and Anchor member, one of the top tiers, you're going to get some complimentary ones. But they also have a ton of other options throughout the cruise. And I love that beautiful piece of art made out of corks. 
fun way to uh, to utilize it with uh, the, the two colors, the uh, the open side, and of course the, uh, the wine side. Okay, we're gonna continue on to the very last spots on the Central Park area. In every Central Park on all the Oasis class, they always have one funky piece of art. Here are these beautiful sunglasses. So if you're looking for your Instagrammable spot, it's most likely going to be right here. But I'm gonna continue on to the, uh, the stores over there. All right, if you want high-end retail, some Bulgari, Cartier, Omega, if you came on board the cruise ship to spend a significant amount of money, this is your spot. If you were gonna get it anyways, or you wanna surprise somebody, it is duty-free, that's the advantage. But uh, once again, great place. And one thing that I love about this, and our clients have told us this for years, is you know, nobody is disrespected or disregarded in a, in a shop like this. You can come in, you can try them on, and uh, maybe it's something you aspire to, but they're really, really awesome about that. I love the salespeople on board. So now we're headed into the Vitality Spa and Fitness Center. It's a really large space on board the Oasis class ships, um, and I love that they've kind of combined all of these things into one, and they also put in a cafe. So there's a cafe over here that has a pretty good selection of complimentary options over here. They also have a, a great juice bar, so those are extra costs. The grab-and-go items are complimentary. Um, they also have a full coffee shop in here with the specialty coffees, if that's something that you're interested in. I'm gonna keep weaving my way through here and head on over to the other side. Right now, I'm gonna take you into the salon. So it's a full service salon. It's really large because of the size of the ship. Over here, you're gonna have the uh, the beauty stations where you get your hair washed, colored, anything that you can do at a salon home. Then you also have uh, stations over here where you can get your manis and petties. Take you all the way around the corner. Okay, I'm gonna continue on back. They have a huge retail area where you can get all of the top beauty supplies that you would want. Um, and once again, duty free. So it comes at a lower cost is what I've been told. Haven't bought too many of them myself personally. Okay, this is the check-in area where they're gonna get you checked in for your treatments, handle all the booking and everything. Keep in mind that if you want a specific time, the earlier you book, the better chances you're gonna get it, especially if it's gonna be on a sea day. This is an area where they're gonna do consultations on board. That's what they're doing right now. They're just getting set up for uh, some of the classes. Keep in mind that if you want to be at a class at a specific time too, we do recommend that when you do the tour the first day that you go ahead and sign up for some of those options. I'm gonna continue on down the ramp here to the fitness center. So as soon as I get into the fitness center, the first thing that I see are all of the bikes. They've got a large selection. They've got some great ellipticals. They also have all of the treadmills that are up against the window. For me, if you're gonna exercise on a cruise ship, at least you should have a view of what everybody else is seeing. They're also gonna have these private consultation areas. So if you want a body analysis done, you want some different consultations, or if you want to do a private a personal training, that's something that they offer as well. As you continue on into the gym, you're gonna see that you have all of the different kinds of machines, all the pulley machines that you could possibly need. They're also gonna have a large selection of free weights, uh, dumbbells, uh, things along those lines. Because it's such a big ship, it's I think the largest fitness center at sea and they have all of the new modern equipment because it's a brand new one as well. Over here, you've got some more of the weights. You've got the, uh, the stair steppers over here. And then as we come on in this room, I'm gonna show you where they do the spinning. So one thing that I love about the spin classes on board is they're all the competitive type. I think if you do any type of exercise, you know, play sports, I played basketball, anything that you do that has a little competitive edge to it, I think is gonna be, make for a better workout. They also have a TRX room here where they're gonna do the full classes. It's also uh, different kinds of aerobic classes in there, including dance. So if you're looking for the bar, that's a perfect place for it. And then you're gonna head on down the stairs. So this is a really unique aspect or unique feature that they only have on board Oasis class ships once again. And that is a true jogging track that is a jogging track. That's really what this is all about um, because it's all the way down here on the bottom and they have the lifeboats on the outside. They've used a space that nobody usually uses, but most cruise ships have the jogging track up on the top and uh, essentially you're paying, you know, you're dodging all of the different chairs and loungers and things like that. Uh, I really love the space. They colored in the entire space. They added little signs that are motivational. Um, and once again, it's a really huge track. So if you are an athlete, you're training for an event, um, the ability to use a track like this is a real advantage as far as I can see. Um, one other nice thing about the Harmony and the Symphony only is they have a couple of these spaces tucked away here uh, where you can hide out. You've got a great view out the side. Uh, it's also sheltered and protected if you have inclement weather. Uh, but once again, great place to hang out and relax and uh, you get to have everybody else run by you. And well, you know, you're doing what you want. They're doing what you want. They want. And that's what cruising is all about. Okay, so the next space that we're gonna explore is the spa itself. It's two levels. On the upper level, you're gonna have the, uh, the Medi Spa here. So inside the Medi Spa, it, it is exactly what it is. It's a medical clinic in here. You can do lots of different things like Botox. They also have the, uh, the cool sculpting. It's always fun to eat as much as you can, schedule it for the last day, and then get rid of it all. I think that's exactly how it works, but well, anyway, I'll have to ask the doctor in just a minute. But once again, all of those treatments that you could get at a Medi Spa at home, you could get here on Royal Caribbean. 
All right, so now I'm headed into the main part of the spa area. It is down a flight of stairs, but they do have a lift here if that's something that you need. As soon as I walk through the doors, I'm now in the spa itself. There's usually a couple ladies here that are assisting with. Um, they were actually helping other customers right now, but I'm gonna take you all the way through to the back to where all of the treatment rooms are. Um, so your treatment rooms are all the way down, make a huge horseshoe. But before that, I wanted to take you into the relaxation room. So right now today on, on boarding day, this is the place they use for consultations, but once the crew starts, this is the place where you go to chill and relax and get in that zen set, set mindset so that you can have the best spa treatment possible. They've got some teas and waters and different things like that over here. I love the, uh, like the watermelon water that they have in here. Going to continue on through. Once again, you see more treatment rooms. They have several different kinds. They've got couples treatments. They've got mud treatments, all kinds of different uh, options. So you pick what works best for you. So just inside here is the thermal suite. They're going to have an aromatherapy. Um, they're going to have dry sauna, moist, uh, moist rooms as well. And then they also have the loungers that you can sit and relax. They're really good for the back because they're heated. I'm not going to go in there right now because there's some guests that are utilizing it. I'm just going to respect their privacy. We're going to head on out and finish up the tour of the spa now. So the very last space that I wanted to mention was the Smile Spa. So if you'll follow me in here, once again, it's set up very much like the Medi Spa. They have teeth whitening and uh, it's something that you can make an appointment for. And uh, once again, if that's something you want to do on a cruise, it's available to you. So now I'm inside the Royal Theater. It is a massive space where they put on full Broadway style production shows. This particular one, they do Grease. It's outstanding. I've seen it. I had a lot of fun with the cast uh, when we were on board recently. Um, but basically they, they use this for all kinds of events that require a stage, so you're gonna have stand-up comedy, you're gonna have full production shows, and then also, like now, the mustard drill. So just outside the Royal Theater is Jazz on Four. This is a great venue if you like to listen to jazz music, uh, but it's also a great venue to use throughout the day uh, when it's not used too much. So they use it for all kinds of different events in here. They'll have a private function that's just finishing up, but I like to come down here and hide away and read and have a really nice, quiet place because nobody's gonna bug you during the day. So just across from Jazz on 4 is The Attic. So this space is, at its heart and soul, it is a comedy club. They've got a stage here. I've really, really enjoyed the comedians over the years, especially the late night comedians, but keep in mind, it is a raw show, um, but uh, really, really, really funny. Uh, eclectic decor in here. I love all the, uh, the dogs on the wall there. Always makes me smile, but you've got these big oversized couches. You've got different kinds of chairs, and then in the back, you've got a full bar with the high tops here the bar setup, and then even in the very, very, very back corner, they've got kind of like a, almost a private room space that's uh, you know really nice, especially if you're in a nightclub atmosphere. So this is a multi-use space. Right now they're actually using it to sign people up uh, for shows and packages and things like that on boarding day, uh, but throughout the cruise it'll be used during the day and in the evening for different events. All right, so now we're in my home away from home, my happy place, the Diamond Club. I'm a Diamond Plus member, and some cruise, uh, some of the ships you can use the Concierge Lounge and all the ones at the Diamond Lounge you can have here, but as you can see, it's a really big, beautiful space. It's a social space. We've met all kinds of amazing people here over the years. We cruise a lot with my cousin and his wife and different friends and family members, and this is kind of a, a natural gathering spot to have a cocktail before dinner because it is included if you are a Diamond member or above. I'm gonna take you through the space here Right here, you've got the coffee machine. It looks like it shut down until after the mustard drill, but you can use this 24 seven. So if you want that espresso, free here. And then over here, they're gonna have a setup with different canapes and appetizers each and every night. I know I've had my uh, fair share and your fair share of mozzarella sticks and chicken wings and uh, well, everything else that they put out. I know I've been on a lot of days on Royal Caribbean cruises and pretty much every single one of them we've managed to get in here for a while. All right, so now we're headed into Studio B. Studio B is the ice skating rink on board. This was introduced with the Voyager of the Seas and it's been on all of their ships since then for really, really good reason. It's a multi-use space. Right now you can see that it is set up as an ice rink. They've got stadium seating all the way around. Some of it can come back and they can you know, pull it back if they need to, but they use it for, uh, they'll do like a sock hop in here. They'll <laughs> have the, uh, the adult scavenger hunt in here. And when I say adult, keep in mind it is adult. And then uh, I'm not sure if it's set up quite yet, but this is where they will also have laser tag. But at its heart, it is an ice skating rink, so you can do free skating, it's complimentary. I was really excited they had size 15 shoes for me. Um, but they also put on a really, really nice full production show, ice skating show here. Um, make sure that you check it out once during your cruise. And if you do all the different Royal Cruises that have them, check them out on all of them. They're really, really excellent. All right, so just outside Studio B, I always take the port side. Uh, just keep in mind that if you are a smoker, you can smoke in the casino. And the other side is the smoking side. So if you don't want the smoke, you're gonna wanna walk on this side. Not only does it serve as a walkway, but it's also part of the, uh, the Park West Gallery. 
Um, so you're gonna see all the beautiful art. I love watching it or looking at it as you walk by. But in addition to all the beautiful art we're here to see, you can also purchase it. In fact, I have clients that come on board Royal Caribbean specifically so that they can work with Park West. They've done it for quite a few years and have amazing collections in their home. So once again, if that's something that you're interested in, it is available. They also have a ton of art from Brito. Um, love his work there. Uh, but Royal Caribbean's had a collaboration with him for quite a few years and uh, brought quite a bit of his art on board the ship as well. So we're almost through the gallery. The next space that we're gonna enter is the casino. So this is a full, huge, huge, huge casino at sea. So as you walk on in, the first thing that you'll see is all of the slot machines. So there's a ton of them. It's basically the same thing on both sides. They have huge amount of slots here and over there. They also have all of the Kino games and uh, you know the multi-use card games that you can play three card poker and that kind of stuff if you like. They have a real Texas Hold'em table where it's hand dealt. Love that, I don't love the videos personally. They have three card poker, Texas Hold'em, um, roulette, craps, and all of the casino games that you would expect on a major casino. There's also a really great bar. Uh, once again, if you're a smoker, that's a bar that you can smoke at on the far side. And they also have the TVs there so you can have the sports, uh, sports experience too if that's something you're interested in. If you don't love smoke, you probably wanna stay out in general, but this side, they do a pretty good job with the filtration systems. All right, so now I'm in Azumi, which is the uh, the Teppan Grill and Sushi restaurant on board, Japanese in general. So, what? Oh my gosh. You have been everywhere. You've been all over the place. It's good. Mustache is looking good, filling in here. I know, I got to work on it. My bad. All right, so over here is where they have the Teppan Grills. This is a fun way to eat. I know for my family, when we have the nieces and nephews and my daughter, this is a great way to get them all together. You got all the noise, the jokes, and of course, who doesn't love to uh, catch a flying shrimp or, uh, well, you know, see a volcano explode. But this is a, a fun time. Not a huge space for a ship like this, this size. Um, so it is one of the reservations that you want to get right away. Um, as I continue on to the other side of the restaurant here, this is a, it's kind of like divided where this is more of the traditional Japanese restaurant. They've got a full array of Japanese food and then of course the sushi bar right here. I just love to come and sit at the sushi bar. If you have that unlimited package, it is included and I really can get my money's worth when you give me something that is unlimited. All right, so now we're headed into the dining room. We're taking you in on deck four to give you a slightly different perspective. So right when you walk in, um, the first thing that you see here is a captain's table, of course, over to the side. Um, but when I show you all of this, you have a huge array of uh, seating options. So you got the eight tops and 10 tops, four, six. It's really important that you pick that right away as soon as you book your cruise. Make sure that your travel agent takes care of that for you. That's something that I try to do right away because sometimes it's not even available if you book really far in advance. So if you wanna get exactly what you want, ask immediately, but you see that they've had out of these new architectural features. So this does not exist on some of the older ships. We have this light that kind of goes up all the way top to bottom, and they have a different eclectic decor on each different floor to give it, you know, kind of a, a unique feel. So over here, you're gonna have the grand chandelier and then the main floor of the dining room. And down there, it's the, uh, the American icon. So you can see all of the, uh, the American uh, Americana features and things like that. But once again, it gives you that massive grand dining room feel that Royal Caribbean has nailed since the first Voyager class ship. Okay, so now we are out on the boardwalk. One thing that I do miss from the other ships that's not here is the other ships have this kind of walkway where you learn about how the, uh, the carousel is made. But once again, this is my personal taste. Over here, you're gonna have the boardwalk doghouse. So this is complimentary sausages, hot dogs, all that kind of stuff. So if that's something that you want, this is a great place to grab and go. It's really, really a quick venue. And as we continue back, you can see the wooden carousel. So this is a true authentic wooden carousel. It was hand carved for Royal Caribbean and is just on the Oasis class ships. So next up is Starbucks coffee. It is a true authentic Starbucks coffee. Uh, you can even get your stars and everything there. But I just wanted to point out that uh, it, is, it is included in the star class package. That's something that's unique because some of the cruise lines don't include that for you. Next, you have the shop. This is the logo packet, logo shop, so you can get anything and everything Royal Caribbean. If you want that lanyard, the hat, the bathing suit, any of those types of things, they're gonna have them in there. And then as we cross over to the other side, uh, you've got a couple venues. This is just basically retail. A lot of it is beachwear, and then they also have a uh, sunglasses shop. And I'm gonna take you into the, the small arcade that they have out here on the boardwalk. It's supposed to be a Coney Island style boardwalk, so it makes sense. Can't have an arcade without the claw games. Over in the corner, you have some air hockey, ski ball here. And then I guess this is kind of a guitar hero for, uh, for piano. But anyway, I did play that for about seven, eight years. Thanks you, Mom and Dad. I, I know at least you know, one song. So there we go. 
Okay, so the next space is Johnny Rockets. This is once again an authentic Johnny Rockets. It is a 1950 styles cafe. One secret, you can have breakfast here every single day. It is complimentary, something you may want to keep in mind if you want a sit down option. But this is where you're going to get burgers, fries. Their chili is really out of this world. It is an upcharge. You do pay a little bit more for it, but I think it's worth it. And then, of course, you can't have a 50s, uh, 50s diner without unbelievable sundaes and milkshakes. So I've eaten my weight or fair share in them, however you want to say. Directly across from Johnny Walker's is Sabor. So Sabor is a uh, taqueria and tequila bar, basically meant to be elevated Mexican food. It's really, really tasty. I've seen that, uh, that throughout the, the entire time that I've cruised with Royal, when they've had one of these, I've been really, really impressed with every single meal. My favorite part though, I just wanted to point out over here, is of course the tortilla maker because nothing is really better than fresh tortillas with a nice little butter and some salt on there. Mm, absolutely delicious. And the table side guacamole that goes along with it. Well, anyway, it's pretty good stuff. But once again, this is a elevated Mexican restaurant with views right out to the, uh, the boardwalk and you have indoor and outdoor seating, but it's really all outdoor seating. So sometimes this does get a little warm in here. All right, so right on the bottom of the boardwalk you have where the ultimate abyss ends up. So if you're sitting here at the bar, you're gonna hear lots and lots of screams, just a heads up, but it, it's a lot of fun. This is where you leave uh, your sled, you just leave it there and go ahead and head on out. How you doing, sir? Right here is the kids area. They're having a blast. I know my daughter loves to climb up there. Basically just a jungle gym at sea. Uh, and on the ultimate family suite on the symphony, you actually have one of those outdoors for you. So just behind me is the Aqua Theater. It's a unique feature that Just Royal has. You got a giant pool there. Right now the floor is all the way up. So it's kind of a multi-function show. You got people diving off the top into the pool. It's a lot of rock and roll, a lot of, a lot of heavy, uh, heavy music, excitement. Everybody has a great time. That's what this is all about. They also show movies here and other special events like uh, football games and such. Right up behind me, you can see uh, the Aqua Theater suites. Make sure you check out our videos with full tours of them. My favorite suites on board the ship. But what I love about them is you also get to be part of that view and part of the experience as well. So just like every royal ship, they have rock climbing walls. There's two of them. These are more extreme because it's a bigger ship. Um, and then also you've got the ultimate abyss that goes right up the middle of the boardwalk. So now we are going to head into the schooner bar. Just wanted to point out the loyalty desk is right here. So if you need anything with your crown and anchor status or any of those benefits, check them out right there in the corner. But the schooner bar is the ultimate royal Caribbean bar. It's on every single ship. I love it. You love it. I know everybody else loves it. You've got a piano in the middle. I've had so many great sing-alongs here in the, well, maybe after a few drinks or, well, maybe more than a few drinks. But once again, it's all about a nautical theme. You can see that it looks and feels like an old schooner. Um, and as we get closer and closer to the, the main part of the bar, I can also point out that they have great people watching from here as well. You've got uh, these bar low bars here, seating on both sides, but basically you can look down right onto the rising tide and then also onto the promenade itself. But here is the bar and then all the artwork, just like all the other schooner bars are kind of the front of a ship but perfect, perfect Royal Bar. And you know I have not finished a Royal Caribbean cruise until I have had a rum and Coke in the schooner bar. Okay, so forgive me, it's a little bit crowded because the mustard drill is getting ready to start right now, but we wanted to show you the rest of the ship before we had to hop off. So the Bionic Bar is right behind me. Exactly what it sounds, it's a robot bartender. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you, you basically order on an iPad and then it's gonna move and shake and move to the music and then you get your drink. So just, uh, I guess, cheap labor, but also a fun way to, uh, to enjoy that. So over here, you're gonna have the rising tide. I talked about that up top. This is the bar that's gonna go up several stories. And you may not know this, but you can actually get married on the rising tide if that's something that you're interested in doing. So as we get onto the promenade, what we are is we're kind of in the heart of all of the uh, retail on board. So Regalia is their luxury watches. They have a ton of really, really high-end luxury jewelry and watches and things like that if that's something you're interested in. Don't forget to stop by the next cruise desk. I actually just did myself when I was on, on, on the tour uh, because you're able to purchase certificates so that you can have a lower cost on your future cruise. So you always wanna book on board. It's gonna go right back to your travel agent um, and take care of it, but it's just the best deal for you. Right in the middle here, you have this beautiful, beautiful, well, it looks like a Jaguar, beautiful car. The CEO and uh, chairman of uh, Royal Caribbean is a huge car fan, so that's where this comes from. You're gonna find one in every single promenade. And right behind me is Cafe Promenade. This is another one of those fast casual places where you're gonna have sandwiches and wraps and things like that where you can grab and go. It's open really, really late uh, in the evening, so uh, maybe a place you wanna stop by after you have a uh, time in the Dazzles nightclub. Right here you see Kate Spade. New York, so it's Kate Spade shop, once again, duty free, so maybe it's a better deal than something that you were looking at before. And then the next space is going to be the uh, the Boot and Bonnet. So the Boot and Bonnet is a pub. 
it's an unapologetic pub. They have music here every night. It's usually a guitar player. He's going to stand right here. Um, but it gets kind of kind of loud in here, and it gets that awesome pub atmosphere. In fact, uh, it's uh, one of my favorite places to be in the evening, especially if you don't go to the nightclub. You can have a lot of fun and uh, just relax with your friends. Across uh, the way here, you're going to have Sorrento's Pizza, another classic Royal Caribbean restaurant. Um, currently, everything, like I said, is just shutting down because they're getting ready to do the, uh, the drill. But I'm going to sneak in here for you real quick show you what it's all about. This is a quick, fast, casual restaurant. So you've got all the pizza ovens there. Pepperoni is insane. I drink it a ton, uh, or drink it a ton, eat it a ton. There you go, going a little quick here. But uh, this is where you're also gonna have different grab and goes and antipastos. So it's a full Italian restaurant, but it's really just a place to grab and go and it's open late into the evening. So I think I've had a few dozen pizzas here, maybe at two, three in the morning after, uh, well, anyway, won't talk about that right now. Okay, so as we continue along, you got port merchants. This is where you can get alcohol and things like that. It's duty free. We have some more super high-end luxury retail. They've got it all out here, getting you excited to, uh, to go ahead and spend a few dollars. Uh, but right now I'm gonna cut across the way. These stations are set up with sales throughout the cruise. So right now they're doing the soda and the drink packages, but different things will be out here throughout. You've got Solera there where you can get all of your perfumes. Once again, duty free. And then right over here, I'm gonna take you into On Air, which is the karaoke bar on board. Okay, so we are inside on air. If you love karaoke, if you love watching karaoke, please don't take yourself too seriously. But if you enjoy all that kind of fun stuff, this is the place to be. You've probably seen some of my bad karaoke from some other shows or some other videos. Unfortunately, can't do it right now. Um, but uh, once again, you've got the stage seating here, it's, uh, multiple tiers. This is also a place where they show sports. So I've seen football in here quite a few times on these big screen TVs. And then of course the full bar, because if you're gonna do karaoke, Lord knows you need a full bar. Okay, so right here in the center of the promenade, you have the shore excursions. It's all digital now. You use your key card or uh, the, the wow band, you tap it on there. You can select the shore excursions. You can see what you got. And then there's always people here to help as well. And so I'm gonna head across to Boleros. This is a fun, fun, fun place to be in the evenings. We all know that uh, Latin dancing is a lot of fun and we know the people that are participating in Latin dancing have even more fun than everybody else around them. I've been to a few uh, a few parties that went uh, way, way, way into the night with tons of fun happening, and that is the dance floor. This is the one that's gonna be rocking, it's the one that's going, going crazy, and once again, a lot of salsa music and different kind of Latin flair, but great place to people watch, lots of different, uh, well, you got these big sofas, the small love seats, and then of course along the wall, you've got a, a long bench there. So um, a lot of different seating options and then a beautiful, beautiful, really large bar with the, the beautiful glass ceiling there. But this is the place to be in the evenings for my money. All right, so above me, you can see the light coming in from the roof. It's this beautiful, beautiful glass sculpture that goes up into uh, Central Park. And then of course the giant head. You always gotta pay attention to where the giant head is looking. If you cruise on the Harmony, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Congratulations for making it all the way through the video. Thank you so much for watching. We really, really appreciate it. Please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you like the video and uh, hit the bell so that you get the notifications. But I wanted to close right here. You got Kennedy Space Center off in the back. I got to see a rocket launch from here on a cruise ship. It was unbelievable on the Quantum of the Seas. And there's several times where you actually can coming up on Royal Caribbean. So keep that in mind. But when you're ready to book Royal Caribbean, reach out to Hard Travel. We are your suite experts. I handle personally all of the suites in our office. And we really, really specialize in those star class suites. We have a ton of star class customers. We know the ins and outs of it. We know the genies personally. And we would love to help you have an unbelievable vacation with your family at an incredible value.